Hey everybody, we are in the middle of a series of reviews of gear manufactured by REI's internal gear and apparel design division. So not only is REI a retailer, they are a manufacturer of their own brand of products and they have their own gear design team to bring those products to market. So in the last video, you saw the Magma Quilt review. In this one, we're reviewing a tent. And we have two more to present this spring, a backpack and a lightweight camp chair. Now, the reason we're releasing this series of REI reviews right now is because we have a whole bunch of lighter and higher performance cottage niche products that are being reviewed. We wanna make sure a couple of things. One, that we're providing balance and that we're not just covering the ultralight gear because frankly, not everybody is into like hardcore ultralight. And the second reason is that REI is America's largest specialty outdoor retailer and a lot of people shop there. And I wanna make sure that for those of you who do spend time shopping at REI, I wanna make sure you guys have a good idea of what REI is offering in terms of lighter weight, high performance gear. And finally, third, I want you to have an understanding of the broader market of lightweight backpacking gear. And that requires us to acknowledge and address some of the larger market manufacturers like REI. These reviews are not sponsored videos. We do not accept any money whatsoever to do gear reviews for a manufacturer. Okay, with that as an introduction, let's get into this next review, which is the REI Quarter Dome SL1 tent. Okay, today we are reviewing the REI Quarter Dome SL1, which is the tent behind me. It's a double wall, single side entrance, single vestibule tent that weighs less than two and a half pounds. We've been testing the tent in pretty stormy conditions. It's windy and wet and cold and rainy right now. So we have a pretty good idea of how it performs with respect to wind stability, condensation management, things like that. And we'll talk about that in this review. The tent sets up with a single hubbed shock corded pole. So there's actually three pole structures, two that go into the front, one that goes along the spine of the back. They insert into grommeted tabs on the outside of the uh, tent body, or if you're using the footprint, the footprint. And this helps make it a semi freestanding tent. Now it's not truly freestanding. You do need two stakes in the back, two in the front for the vestibule and ideally one on the side, and that allows the tent to stay taut. For stormy conditions, I've been adding two additional stakes to the front corners, as well as three of the external guy lines to really help stabilize the tent. Okay, so it's a little bit windy today, and I'm gonna want the foot end of the tent sort of facing into the wind. I also want the foot end kind of quartering into the wind so that the wind is coming across the backside and the foot into the tent. That way my vestibule is protected and I can keep the vestibule doors open without wind blowing directly into my tent. So you can kind of see what direction the wind's blowing here. And that's the front end of the tent down there. So I'm gonna quarter it this way and pitch the rear down here. So the very first thing I'm going to do is stake out the back corners of the tent so that the guy lines are coming out of the inner tent at 45 degree angles. And we can adjust this after we get the front two stakes in. Where'd you find this? Okay, so as you can see, the, the stake guy line points are coming out of the bottom of the inner tent at 45 degree angles. Now you can see that REI has engineered a bit of a bathtub floor in here. It's about four inches tall. And you have two uh, guy lines coming out of it into a single stakeout point providing tension that holds that floor up. We'll set up the pole and insert it into the grommets. Okay, this is a single pole set that is connected with this hub right here. And I'll show you some more detail about that in a second. It's color coded so that the two orange poles connect to the two orange tabs on the front of the tent and the black pole attaches to the rear grommet on the rear of the tent. Okay, so as I mentioned before, there's a hub at the center of five poles. There's a long black one that goes to the rear of the tent, two shorter curved front poles that go to the front of the tent, 
and then these two roof struts right here and I'll show you how all this goes together. When I pitch the poles I like to do the two front poles first because it makes for um, just a more stable structure to insert the third black pole. Pole tips get inserted into grommets that are on the color-coded tabs. So we do the two front poles and then the rear one. The next step is to do the roof struts and there's two tabs on the roof for those. Okay, and then finally there's pole clips that attach the mesh fly to the poles. And then there's some on the front. And as you can see, this construction makes for a very tight stable, roomy shelter with a lot of headroom. Okay, let's put the rain fly on and we'll start here at the back end, which is the end that's into the wind. That makes it a little more manageable when you have loose fabric blowing downwind rather than uh, trying to fight an up, upwind battle. The fly attaches to the inner tent with a buckle. So you, first thing you do is clip on that buckle. So you'll notice by looking at the inside of the fly, there's some Velcro loops here, which are designed to go around the poles. And I like to attach these as I put the fly on because it just makes it a lot easier than trying to do it from inside the vestibule. So as we work our way up, the next thing we come to is the cross struts in the roof. And you'll find the grommets on the inside of the fly and place those on, there's one on each side. And do this as you put the fly on. It's much easier to pitch your tent when you're standing up and have the flexibility to, to move around. So now we're getting ready to roll the front of the fly over and we come up again with these Velcro loops. So these Velcro loops are going to be affixed around the poles. There's gonna be an equal number on each side of the tent. Following this process is also nice. Uh, it's a nice habit to get into because when it's windy, you almost have to do it like this in order to manage all the fabric flapping around. Okay, so now we're ready to buckle the front of the fly into the pull tabs at the bottom. Okay, so our next step is to stake the, cor the rear corners of the fly into the rear stakes and those loops can just slip right over the stakes that you use to pitch the inner tent. There's going to be one of these on each side. So we're going to come around to the side now and pitch this side guy line. So you'll see that there's a strap with a toggle on it that's going to connect to a loop on the inner tent. So make sure you connect that before you stake it out. The purpose of this strap is to bring the side of the inner tent out so it's nice and taut, it gives you a little more living space inside the shelter. And then stake this out sort of loosely. Okay, next we're going to stake out the vestibule. And there's going to be two stake out points for it. Okay, so now we're ready to go around and apply tension to the rest of the tent so that it's pitched nice and taut. Now there's an order for this. Start at your poles and then do your perimeter guy lines a little bit out of the time until there's nice even tension all the way around the tent. So we'll start at our rear poles here and we are going to adjust this tension with the buckle and strap that's at the base of this pole. Okay, now we're going to the front poles and going to do the same thing here. 
Okay, so now we'll go around and do the perimeter guy lines. And again, just a little bit at a time because we want nice even tension applied to all these guy lines. Now this isn't necessary for fair weather, but if you're expecting stormy or windy conditions, you can attach the guy lines. There are three of them. They attach to loops along the pole structure. So there's two in front and one in the rear. So the purpose of these guy lines is primarily to prevent movement of the tent in the longitudinal direction. Because if you get a lot of movement here, what you'll end up doing is collapsing that pole structure. Not a huge deal. If you do experience that collapse, these kinds of tents are actually made to do some degree of collapse, especially for snow loading and things like that, so your poles don't break. So it's not a bad thing, but it will keep your tent much quieter in high winds if you, pit, if you use these guy lines. So the first one in the back should come right in line with that pole. And don't pitch it too tight. You don't want to pitch it so tight that it deforms the shape of the pole. But you want to pitch it tight enough that there is tension on the guy line. And then we can come to the front and same kind of thing with this. So we want to bring that guy line out so that it's in line with the direction of the pole. And same with this front guy line. Okay, so now we have a very stormworthy, quiet, and stable tent that can handle inclement weather. So take some time pitching it so that you can pitch it properly and you'll get a lot of performance out of this tent. One thing I really like about this tent, and it's, it's not commonly known because it's just assumed that it's an American style tent where if you're pitching it in the rain, you have to pitch the inner first and then the rain gets the inner all wet and then you can pitch the fly. And so it's this mad chaos and, and American ma tent manufacturers get criticized quite a bit for building tents like this. However, if a tent has a fast fly pitch option where there's a, an additional ground cloth. You don't have to do that. You can pitch it fly first using that ground cloth and the grommets that are included in the ground cloth for inserting the pole tips. The REI Quarter Dome SL1 is no different. However, it's one of the best fast fly pitch tents for pitching the inner afterwards. So you can actually pitch the fast fly version, which is the rain fly and the ground cloth. The ground cloth weighs about a quarter of a pound. And then get inside the tent, get your gear in here, and you can get out of the storm. And pitching the inner tent is actually very easy, and it's much easier than some of the other inner tent pitch options on the market. Even from manufacturers who've been doing this a long time, like Hilleberg, I find that pitching the inner in something like this requires much less goofing around than it does in a Hilleberg tent, which requires some contortions to uh, get everything positioned properly. The REI Quarter Dome SL1, the inner pitches quickly and easily from inside the tent. Okay, so when I'm packing a tent in really wet weather, I'm going to keep my poles, stakes, and ground cloth or footprint on the outside, and I'm going to keep the rain fly on the outside. The inner tent is protected inside the pack so it stays dry. So let's go ahead and set it up in the scenario where, where we are setting up the outer rain fly and footprint and then we'll get inside and set up the inner tent from inside. First thing I'll do is get the pole set ready. And again, we've got a color coded footprint. So the black uh, strap for the pole in the back goes with the black pole and two front straps are orange color coded for the front poles. So the first thing we're going to do is stake down the footprint. I really don't care if this gets wet because we're going to put the inner tent on top of that anyways. And now we'll insert the pole. Okay, and now we're ready for the fly. So the very first thing I'm going to do is clip the fly 
into the pull clips. Next thing I'm going to do is insert the cross struts into their grommets. And then I'll pull the rest of the fly over to the back side of the tent and clip the fly buckle into the pull buckle. I'm going to loop the fly guy lines over the tent stakes that we've already pitched. I need to do that back here. Okay, so now I have a couple more stakes to do. I have two stakes on the vestibule side and one on the other side. So let's go ahead and stake those. Okay, so now the tent is fully set up. So the next thing I'm gonna do before I tension the tent fully is go inside and attach the Velcro tabs that are on the inside of the fly to the poles. And they secure around the poles like so. And this is a good time to make sure your front vent is open and the strut is in place on the Velcro tab up there. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is attach the guy lines. I wanna do as much as possible outside the tent before I go in and set up the inner. And right now we're gonna leave the guy lines kind of loose. That's gonna be our very last step is to tension those properly. Now we'll do the rear one. Okay, so now we're, we are ready to go inside and pitch the inner tent. So typically what you're gonna do is in a big rainstorm, once you have the fly set up, you can, if you want, you can tension it out now so you have a nice stable structure, throw all your gear in here, get out of the weather, change clothes, get dry, get warm, whatever you need to do, and hang out in there until the weather improves. And then you could pitch your inner tent or you can do it now. So let's go ahead and go inside and we'll pitch the inner tent now. Now, one thing I really like about the REI, hi. <laughs> what do you want to do, in or out? <laughs> Go. One thing I really like about the REI Quarter Dome SL1 is that the inner tent can be pitched completely while inside the tent. A lot of tents that have an inner pitch, second pitch, um, they're kind of difficult to do. There's a lot of contortions you got to do to reach things and everything's very compact in this tent. It's very easy to pitch. So the first thing I'm going to do is take care of all the attachments that are along the back wall. And then I can work out this way so that I have room to work. If I try to pitch the stuff that's out on the front wall where the door is, then it's going to be hard to reach everything in the back. So the most difficult area to reach is going to be this far corner in the rear pole. So I'm gonna set the rear pole grommet first and it basically just involves me lifting up the pole and sliding that grommet underneath the pole tip. Second thing I'm going to do is set the rear guy line cords. I'm just gonna reach out under the tent and slide these loops over the tent stakes. We'll do that for both sides. Okay, remember that strap I was telling you guys about? There's a small loop on the back sidewall of the tent. And we have this strap that's connected to the fly with a, with a toggle. We're gonna insert that toggle into the loop on the inner tent. Okay, next we will take the first of the front grommets Make sure I locate the other one here. We'll take the first of these front grommets and put it under the pole tip on the front corner. And do the same for the second one. And this is why you don't want to tension the tent too much initially, because you want to have enough play so that you can get those grommets in place. Okay, so the final step, and this is what makes the whole system work, is to attach the clips. If you have a tent 
where the poles have to go through sleeves, you can't pitch the inner tent second, it has to be pitched first. So a tent that does have an inner tent that is attached to the poles exclusively with clips, it works great. So again, we're gonna start in the most difficult place to access, which is back here. And start attaching the clips. One thing I find useful, especially if I have to have the vestibule door closed as I pitch the tent, is to open the inner tent door. And that way I can actually sit inside the inner tent and it's, there's not quite as much cramped space when you do the clips. Two more things. The inner tent also has grommets that attach to the pole struts. So let's do those before we do this peak, these two peak clips here. And they just slide onto the back of the pull tips. Okay, and that's it. Now we have our inner tent set up. It's remained dry. And this is how you pitch a tent in the rain. One more step we want to do now that we have everything together is to secure the doors and tension the tent on the outside. And the reason we want the doors secure is because this is the default geometry of the tent. And if the doors are secure, then it allows us to provide the proper amount of tension. And I'll show you what I mean at the end when we adjust tension with an open vestibule door. Okay. These are some of the most important load-bearing seams on the tent. Uh, you can see that there's a seam all along the pole line, and that's part of the design. So you want to make sure those seams are really tight. Okay, so always do those seams first. And don't be afraid to put a lot of tension. You want these panels to be as tight as possible. Far side. The final step is to tighten the guy lines. Now the purpose of the guy lines is to provide stability to the pole structure when wind comes into these panels. So they don't need to be tensioned super tight like the rest of the canopy. You just need enough tension on them to prevent the poles from moving in gusty winds. If you tighten them too tight, you can deform the pole structure. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to tighten them to the point where you are bending the poles. So we'll do the two front ones and the back one. Okay, so now you have a completely tensioned structure and it's very stable. It's probably my favorite reason for having a tent of this design where you have a double skin tent with curved shock corded pole sets. You can't get this in a trekking pole tent because the sides and the side panels are so large in surface area and there's just not enough structure to support them like you have in a tent like this. So the main result is that it's not necessarily more storm worthy. I mean, you certainly could survive a big storm in a trekking pole tent, but it's gonna be a lot quieter because you have so much tension distributed around this pole structure that these panels just don't flap like they do in a trekking pole tent. And you can imagine if wind gusts were to hit this tent, it's gonna be very, very quiet. And in fact, the REI Quarter Dome SL1 the Quarter Dome series in general has evolved so much through the years that they really got the design dialed in. And so the combination of using this fabric, which has some really nice stretch to it, 
this pole structure and the guy lines that are available on the tent create a very stable, very quiet structure. So this to me is one of the uh, best features of this particular tent. The interior floor dimensions are 88 inches long, 35 inches wide. It is a little bit of a trapezoidal shaped floor, so you get uh, a little less width down at the end. But the tent is plenty big enough for a long, wide sleeping pad. So I have a 25 by 76 inch pad in here now, and I still have room to put gear in here. The vestibule is a little bit less than 10 square feet, so you've got plenty of room for a big pack and any extra gear that you want to store inside the vestibule. In addition, by rolling the fly up and out of the way, you have a covered cooking area that, unless you have wind-driven rain coming into the front of the tent, uh, you can easily cook in the vestibule area while laying in the tent and still get some shelter from overhead falling rain. You have some options with how you can pitch out the vestibule. So the vestibule pitches with two stakes. You've got this door here that can be closed or left open. Or you can undo the two vestibule stakes and roll the entire thing away. And then you have this wide, expansive view for fair weather nights. And doing so won't affect the integrity of the pitch or anything like that. So it, it still stays stable. And part of why it's able to do that is because you have some external guy lines that you can manage and the fact that it's a semi-freestanding design. If you leave the vestibule open, you think you're going in? And roll it away. Notice that we have a bunch of slack here. Make sure you tension both sides of the vestibule so that the tent stays wind stable when the vestibule is open. For example, you know, I, if I was pitching this tent in a windy area, I would want the wind at my back so that I could sit inside the tent with the vestibule open, enjoy views or cook or whatever, but I still want to have good wind stability. The REI Quarter Dome SL1 can be pitched with the vestibule door open like this, or the vestibules can be completely rolled away. Simply by undoing the vestibule from the tent stake and rolling it all the way back. Okay, so this gives the best views and ventilation for fair weather camping. Okay, so what I've done here is attached a cord through all, what, one, two, three, four, five, and then the sixth one in the middle, all six of these loops so that I have a way to hang gear. So I can do, I can hang wet socks or clip a flashlight up there or something like that. But I leave this in the tent and that way it's ready to go once I get in and want to get organized. Okay, so how... I typically organize in a tent like this. I don't have the fly set up so that you can see better, but I'll put my backpack and my trekking poles in the vestibule, but I have the trekking poles in here right now because it's windy and I don't want my sleeping bag to blow around. I often carry a little pocket radio, and so I'll keep that up in one of these front pockets here. My phone is also something I'd like accessible because I look at maps or journal on it or maybe read uh, on my Kindle app. So I'll put it in this far front pocket. So you've got these two front pockets here for stuff that needs to be accessed um, easily. Um, I usually put my light up with my phone. Then I, then I know those two things are up there. Now my bear spray at night, I like to keep handy as well. So I keep that in the front of the tent there. Uh, the other thing I have is my inReach. And I don't need immediate access to that, but sometimes I turn it on at night and see if any messages are coming through from my family. And if I just leave it up in this upper pocket, then I can hear that. So you've got these two upper pockets here as well to organize gear, which is 
really nice feature too. Now, as you see, when I put the fly on, there's going to be a major vestibule space here and then this little tiny vestibule space here. And up here is where I like to keep my cooking gear. So I have my cook pot and stove in there and I'll keep my water and my water treatment supplies there. That way I've, I have that organized. This is sort of the kitchen here. My toiletries go in my bear bag and this gets hung up at night. And then the final thing I have is a bag full of various sundries. That includes toilet paper, a repair kit, a fire starting kit, first aid supplies and medicines. And this can stay up at the head end of the tent where I have plenty of room. The other thing I'm going to put up here is extra clothing like a hat and gloves and things like that. And then if I have wet gear, I will store that outside the inner tent in the vestibule where the pack is. Okay, let's talk about performance a little bit. I've been testing the tent in the Wyoming spring. It's been cold, wet, and windy here, and I've had no issues at all. In fact, I really feel like REI has done an excellent job in the evolution of their quarter dome line by creating solo tents that get lighter and lighter every year and become better performers in cold, wet, and windy weather. I've been measuring condensation resistance in this tent. I have two Kestrel drop meters that I use to monitor things like temperature and relative humidity. I hang one inside the tent and I hang one outside the tent and then look at the data through the night to see how a tent performs with respect to accumulating condensation and helping keep you warm. For example, last night, we had uh, outside humidity of 100%. There's this fog and mist and rain that's been blowing in and just kind of inundating this area all night long. Temperatures outside were in the high 30s, 37, 38 degrees, somewhere in there. And again, 100% humidity. Inside the tent, it actually retained a fair bit of heat. So it was about eight or nine degrees warmer inside the tent. And of course, as temperature goes up, relative humidity goes down for an equivalent amount of moisture. And so the humidity inside the tent was only in around 85%. So it wasn't terribly humid. And so I didn't notice any condensation accumulating in the tent until late morning. Now, during the late morning, the wind quieted down. And of course, I'm inactive in my sleeping bag. So that temperature differential uh, closed down. And so the temperature and humidity inside and outside the tent were both about 38 degrees and 100%. So when I checked condensation during that period of time, there was nothing more than a very thin film of water on the inside of the rain fly. Even on the inside of the roof of the rain fly, which is where you'd expect water to actually start dripping. I didn't find any water drops at all in the tent. And these are very challenging conditions for condensation management. So there's this pretty good sized peak vent and I think it helps a lot. And a lot of manufacturers will think of a peak vent as an afterthought. And I really like that REI has put in a sizable vent right over where you're exhaling warm, moist breath. And so it's in the ideal location, it's big enough to work and work well. Add to that the fact that it's a double wall tent that's fully enclosed mesh with several inches of space between the mesh and the fly, and you have a shelter that is effective at managing condensation in wet environments. In terms of wind resistance of the entire quarter dome series, which I've been using since the quarter dome was first introduced, this is probably the most wind stable version I've ever used. And I attribute this to the hub based pole design. So you've got this center hub. There are two side struts that are going off to the side. You've got the one long pole going down the back spine of the tent and then two poles going down into the front corners. You have that, you have two stakes in the vestibule and one stake on the opposite side that are providing tension through the canopy. You have two stakes at the end of the tent providing tension to the canopy. And then you have three additional external guy lines that attach directly to the pole structure and provide resistance for wind buffeting. The poles inside the tent are secured with Velcro tabs to the fly. So there's really not a lot to move around in a windstorm. And even in winds that were gusting to 20, 25 miles an hour last night, it remained very stable and very quiet, much quieter than a couple of other tents that I've used in this kind of category.
let's talk about how this tent stacks up against the competition. If you go to the Backpack and Light website, there's a written review about this tent. I'll link it down in the video description and put it up there. So make sure you check that out. And in fact, you might want to pause the video now, go view the comparison table that is in that article and follow along as I talk through how the Quarter Dome SL1 compares to its competitors. Now, as we talk through the competition, let's define this category very specifically. We're looking at double wall, single side entry, single vestibule, semi-freestanding tents. Most of these tents are going to have inner tents that are either entirely or partially mesh. So we'd classify those typically as three season tents in contrast to winter tents, which are going to have inner tents made of solid fabric materials and probably a more robust pole structure. Most of these tents have a hubbed pole design where you have a center hub one rear pole, and then these two front poles that come out. Now in those designs, you can have front entry and side entry tents. Big Agnes has popularized the front entry tents using a hubbed pole design. For example, check out their Fly Creek series, but that's not what we're talking about as part of this category. We're looking at side entry tents because of their ease of use, as well as providing better views and ventilation than front entry tents. Okay, so now that we have the category defined, let's trim it down. I mean, we're all about lightweight backpacking, right? So let's just talk about the... Now in this category over the past few years, there's been anywhere between eight and 12 tents. They are primarily from the manufacturers REI, Nemo, MSR, and Big Agnes. So those are the big four. I've included one more in the comparison table at the Backpack and Light article from Tarp Tent, the Rainbow. The Rainbow is a little bit different because it's a hybrid single double wall design. So it's double wall out in the vestibules, single wall in the body, but it's worth a look because it shares many of the same features as these other tents being a side entry solo, a single vestibule shelter. Most of these tents have a trail weight that is fly, inner, and poles that falls somewhere between 36 and 45 ounces. That's kind of the sweet spot in this category. A few are heavier and some are lighter. The lightest tents in this category are the Nemo Hornet Elite 1P and the MSR Carbon Reflex 1. Both of these shelters weigh in the pound and a half range. The Nemo tent achieves this by using very light materials. The MSR tent achieves this by using a carbon pole set. Other than that, the major differences amongst all the tents in this category are the material choices and how much solid fabric is used on the walls of the inner tent. Some use more than others. The REI Quarter Dome has a full mesh inner except for its short bathtub floor. Mesh is usually lighter than fabric, so the more mesh a tent has, typically the lighter it's going to be. Another distinguishing feature of the tents in this category is that the rear pole that goes down the backside of the tent from the center hub that sits near the rooftop that may terminate in another hub just off the back edge and then split into two smaller poles that improve the stability of the tents near an edge or a corner. Same principle on which the tarp tent pitch lock corners are based. Tents that have this type of construction tend to be a little bit more stable than tents like the REI Quarter Dome, which just has the single pole terminating in a grommet at the floor but that's not a hard and fast rule. A lot of it depends upon the tent design and how the fabric panels are laid out. So just because a tent has this additional pull feature does not mean necessarily that it's going to pitch tighter or be more stable or perform better in wind. In fact, I think this is where the REI Quarter Dome tends to shine. It does away with that second hub and still manages to stay very quiet and very stable in modest winds. Now where the REI Quarter Dome SL1 really shines is its cost. At $280, it is the cheapest tent in the entire category. At 32 ounces, it's also one of the very lightest. That means it has the lowest price to weight ratio of any tent in the category, 
which means it's an outstanding value. The fact that it also performs well in inclement weather and is resistant to condensation, has some great livability features, has a vestibule that's actually bigger than most of the tents in the category, has a floor space that's plenty wide enough for a long, wide sleeping pad with some room to spare for gear storage. All these things add up to make the REI Quarter Dome SL1 a fairly unique tent in the category when you dig down deep and start looking at all these things. So primarily because of its price to weight ratio and performance and in inclement conditions, we give the REI Quarter Dome SL1 our recommended rating. The only thing that really prevents this tent from getting our highest rating, which is highly recommended, is that there are a couple of other tents in this category that are substantially lighter, the MSR Carbon Reflex and the Nemo Hornet Elite. So because those tents are, what, six, seven, eight ounces lighter than the REI Quarter Dome SL1, that potentially could make them the most attractive tents in this category if money was no object. They are more than $150 more expensive than the Quarter Dome SL1. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to learn more, especially how the REI Quarter Dome SL1 compares to the other tents in this category, be sure to visit backpackinglight.com and read the review there. Finally, this is an advertising free channel. We do not do sponsored gear reviews. So if you like what you see and want to support it, please visit backpackinglight.com and join our community by becoming a member. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Look for me in the mountains where walking has a way of pulling you to your peace of mind.